So welcome to the Tales from Tomorrow, the Adventures of the Robot Girl Ada and her dog uh, touring. So my name is Bettina Fentner and I'm the presenter of this uh, session. Uh, Janine just uh, said already, talked about what I'm doing currently, working here, and, um, uh, but uh, my background is I worked uh, for 12 years in Australia at university, so this is why I prefer speaking in English, and that was also accepted as an English session. So uh, welcome. Uh, I studied um, uh, my Master of Arts at the Ludwig Maximilian University many years ago, and um, then I worked for t over 20 years in the film and television industry, uh, and then um, I had a, my own TV academy, and then I was lecturer for film and television in Down Under with the kangaroos and uh, at several universities in Australia um, before I became academic director of the Curriculum Accelerator. So um, changing the business has brought me to where I'm uh, actually, actually now. So this session is uh, pretty short. It's only, you know, now we have, I think, 28 uh, eight minutes left. Uh, um, and it's aimed to give you an idea and some impulses for, for your learning and teaching practices. Uh, I would have liked to have a little bit longer one, but maybe we can, at another uh, point in time, we can, uh, we can do that. So at the end, I, I plan a role play and um, we we'll see if we get, get to that. Um, so first of all, first of all, it's more about um, sharing the concept, and um, then we see. So uh, this is uh, the tales of tomorrow. Is the, the the title of the University Future Festival, as you know, and that brought me or inspired me to the, to this approach and uh, to call it um, tales tales from tomorrow. Uh, so instead of going from today into the future, from the present into the future, I always like to think from the future backwards. Um, this is why I called it Tales from Tomorrow. Um, this is the thought school that uh, emphasize, emphasizes creating the present from the future backwards. It's called backcasting. Um, maybe you already heard about that. So unlike uh, untraditional forecasting, which predicts the future conditions based on current trends, Backcasting starts with defining the desirable, um, the desirable out, outcome, the future, and then works uh, works backwards. Um, it's often used in strategic planning and or, or even in sustainable development. Now, um, the focus, uh, the, the next line is one of my core beliefs. Uh, the focus of education is not just an uh, uh, acquiring knowledge, but on developing a deep understanding of global issues, empathy, and the ability to create positive change. But how can we do this? How can we do this in the, in the current um, environment at the universities? And um, uh, last year, I, uh, I stumbled across, or I found, uh, um, um, I found a presentation or a, a documentation or a, um, a report, if you want to say so. It was called The Innovating Pedagogy uh, and um, Exploring New Forms of Teaching and Learning and Assessment to Guide Educators and Policymakers. And that inspired me uh, furthermore. And they have 10, 10 rules or 10 approaches how to actually innovate pedagogy at universities. Um, so I'm just reading them out and this is a link, uh, actually you can click that in, in, this is also an entire link, the entire presentation is a link and then you can click in the link on this link um, to, to, to read that, um, to read that um, publication. So first they say the pedagogy using AI tools, we don't, we don't get around that anymore as you all know. Yeah. Then we have a metaverse of, um, of education. We have multimodal pedagogy, meaning different media working together to um, enhance the learning experience. We have um, seeing yourself in the curriculum so that the student becomes part of the curriculum itself in the so-called um, co-creation with the educator. We have the pedagogy of care in digital media, media mediate, in digitally mediated settings. Pedagogy of, care, pedagogy of care is one which is very close to my heart so that you actually see the student behind the uh, behind the his job, let's say, or his role. And they, okay, what's happening? You're always asking what's happening, how are you? And share your story. And that's where we're uh, getting in a minute. 
we have the podcast at Pedagogy, free online, uh, um, so many no um, knowledge is now presented through podcasts, which you can really use also creating, of course, podcasts with, the, with your students. We have the entrepreneurial education, we have the relation, relational pedagogies, which uh, focuses on the relation between you as educator, the student, and also the entire environment where the, um, where the teaching happens. And then the so-called entangled pedagogy of learning spaces, where the space becomes uh, um, yeah, paramount to how you transfer knowledge. So please have a look at this uh, at this publication because it's, it's very an inspiring uh, an inspiring uh, read. Oh yeah, look what I had. I didn't scroll, so here you go. <laughs> These are the, just the key points I just I just mentioned. Um, coming to this line as well, the heart of humanity education global system citizens through, through storytelling. So it's not just because of my background in TV business and and uh, university. But I also think that when 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 you share your story or ask someone to share their story it comes to that storytelling makes us a human and i strongly believe um believe in that so as you know in the ever-involving landscape of higher education where the quest for cultivating 21st century skills now is paramount storytelling emerges not just as an art but as a strategic strategic pedagogical tool now um the narrative if we use the narrative to become the bridge between knowledge and imagination and fostering creativity structured and critical thinking among the learners that's that's what i try to uh, bring out into into your space today and and hope you can pick that up and use in your um in your learning and teaching so ada or ada uh, and and her dog touring here we go here they are so these are our storytellers, but before we go, before I introduce you to, to them, I want to just mention the advantages of storytelling for your uh, practice. So you can, for example, make an abstract concept tangible and rela uh, relatable. You can encourage critical thinking. Uh, you can prompt with the students to uh, prompt the students to process and debate solutions. For example, you tell a story and tell them now find a different ending. Yeah, hence creativity by inviting students to imagine alternate endings. That's what I just um, said before. Explore diverse perspectives and create the narrative perspectives. Is if you just say, all right, now uh, from the dog perspective, yeah, how would the dog explain that um, complex problem to the students? Um, cultivate empathy and emotional intelligence experience emotional journeys through characters and plots, very important. Storytelling is based on the emotional connection um, between, between the listener and the, 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 the narrator. Um, promotes structural thinking and discovers how we can all contribute to a future where teaching and learning are enriched by the magic of stories. So storytelling as a central role in this education paradigm um, Bring together diverse experience and perspectives to foster a sense of uh, shared humanity. That's what, um, yeah, what I try to invite you today to to uh, investigate further. Um, of course, I worked on this with um, ChatGPT. It didn't not did, it did not always do what I what I told uh, him her it to do, but uh, we see what uh, what it came came up with. Yeah. Um, so one another one before I go into the Imagine work, I want to um, uh, share with you another um, inspiration, and uh, that is also a link in the presentation, um, in the link of the presentation, and that is the the from the Humboldt Institute for Internet and Gesellschaft (HIIG). And so this talks about utopias for a digital society. So not only about learning and teaching, it's also about how we work, how we live, where we live. And I can also just uh, invite you to, to have a read. It's this very inspiring um, 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 publication. And um, its goal is to 2040. I mean, I, when, I, when I handed this uh, session in, that was before um, ChatGPT 4.0. Now, 
it's actually where what I wanted to talk to you about in 2040, and it's just already there. So you see that we cannot even we imagine the future, and then it, it's much quicker there than we um, actually can can think ourselves. So please have the, a read as a, a read of that as as well. So now, what um, what I want you to I invite you to to imagine you are in the year of um, 2045. The universities have transformed into global hubs where students from around the world connect, collaborate, and learn together in virtual, virtual and physical spaces. We already practiced that in Australia at Swinburne. We had hybrid and high flex teaching spaces. Uh, hybrid, of course, when you are there from all spaces and around the world, and high flex that you also can can learn as asynchronous and have all the materials uh, at hand all the time. And um, so that's what it says here. And then it comes that what was at heart before the message, which, which I repeat here uh, again, again, that the focus of education, so as, as far as I understand education, is uh, not just acquiring knowledge, but this deep understanding of global issues, what's happening out, out, there, uh, out there at the moment, and how can I handle that? How do I develop empathy, uh, first of all, with myself, and then, of course, um, with my fellow students and with the academics and everybody around me, uh, of course. And then, yeah, how can I use that knowledge to create um, positive change? So the classroom is multimodal, multimedia, high tech, where students from different cultural backgrounds gather both virtually and in person, holographic displays, virtual reality, um, interactive digital tools, seamless integrated into the learning experience. The classroom is also home to Ada, a compassionate robot assistant at Turing and a visual support dog, Doggy, both designed to enhance the learning environment through emotional and intelligent support. So Ada, um, I call her Ada, I don't know, maybe it's Ada. <laughs> it's a humanoid robot, a humanoid robot with advanced AI capabilities, designed to facilitate, facilitate learning and provide an emotional support. Ada is empathetic and intuitive, capable of understanding and responding to the emotional needs of students in their learning process. Yeah. Um, and then we have the doggy. Um, we can, you know, I, I've worked with Chatty and the ChatGPT, and they came up sometimes with a with the um, with a robotic dog, and I thought, no, maybe it's a real one. Yeah, maybe it's a real one. But then, if it's part of the learning and teaching, and they contribute, it might be need to be an AI dog. But this one looked so real, and I thought it's nice if I can actually caress the uh, the doggy to to feel grounded and feel uh, welcome to the class and to my learning ex um, experience. So yeah, uh, warm, friendly behavior, providing comfort and emotional support to students, um, also equipped with, that's the robot dog, of course, with sensors and AI to detect and respond to students' emotional states. We had this already at Swinburne. We could, we had a, some program running on the emails of students and seeing how they feel. I don't know that there must be a big research about that, that we actually, um, care again and f see what where, in which state the students um, are. So, uh, and the students will be a diverse group of students from around the world, bringing their unique cultural perspective and experience to the classroom. And that's where the story telling, telling starts. Ask them about their story. How did they grow up? What do, what do they want to share? And let them contribute, let them speak, let them say, let them talk. And these two now would would facilitate that these two, this uh, Ada and um, and uh, and and Turing as uh, the doggy as her as her companion, the tutoring companion. I asked, as I said, I asked yesterday. I used it on my phone. I talked to um, Chat. I talked to ChatGPT as a ChatGPT four oh, and there was a perfect. There was an answer, and I wanted to put that in here as a, as a voice uh, recording. But when I downloaded it, the voice was you couldn't uh, hear, you couldn't understand the voice. So I I, I uh, posted it all in here, and just I just saw at the beginning and, and show you a little bit how that could be. This is at a very superficial level. So this is this needs to be then going for much much deeper. But um, the the question was how how could that how could Ida and, and uh, Turing talk about teaching about global warming? Yeah, um, 
and that would be here uh, the call to action gather around come and hear uh, let's let's share a story just like really like sitting at a campfire and and she's inviting them to to do that and the and um the doggy then you know, barks softly and wags the hail hi kids and touring others uh, trusty sidekick and here to help make the story even more fun and exciting and then Ada, star, uh, Ada starts a, a story about Terra. What a beautiful place, full of lush forest sparkling, on, and describes it. And then at the same time, creates all these imageries out of her her brain onto the screen or into a holographic um, um, circle, and and describes the the ocean and and, and the world and the forest and all the the Terra. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the wildlife to to make the um, student feel it. So just like an uh, immersed experience. Um, and then touring with a glass, not just a globe, um, a globe, you know, there's a globe, a real globe in, in, with the nose. Look at this globe, imagine all the wonderful places on Terra, just like our Earth. So it's going into uh, a fictive, fi fi fiction um, setting that Terra is actually not our Earth. To, to 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 come up with a story which is happening somewhere else and so on it goes it goes for a while I'm not reading all that to you please have a read and please remember that um, it is this is uh, an example at a very um, superficial uh, level when it goes about scientific um, backing up scientifically or finding scenario how you actually can help change that then it has to be reprompted or your own experience comes in when you you create your session with your own experience your own knowledge and you fill that then uh, um, and let these uh, two speak to the students so please um read that um read all of that and see how you can maybe as a as a as a um, tutoring body team and in, inspire inspire students yeah uh, so it's all about um the dialogue performance um and then see how how you how you can reach reach your students this 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 setting you might not have a robot the robot uh, at hand so you can put in your classroom no, no doggy but now with chat gpt for oh you can you can um improvise that already quite quite well 